What a beautiful building to welcome us to Frinton on Sea. Yes, we're going to the sea, the North Sea, and I've got some very special people with me. I'll show you them in a minute, but we're down at the sea. I can see it at the end of the street here. Let's get to the sea and we'll talk more. And I'll show you my very special guests. So Connor Avenue here was once described as the Bond Street of the East because it was so shishi and upmarket. And we've got a lovely bit of Art Deco here. So over the road here, the Lock and Barrel, the Faversham Brewery, Shepherd's Name, that was Frinton's first pub and its only pub opened in 2009, I believe. Until then, it had no pub. Don't want the hoi polloi getting drunk and disorderly, do we? And look, there you can see, look, special guest number one, Heidi, is heading for, ah, oh, I thought she was heading for Wright's Deli, but no, she's heading for the vintage clothing shop. It's half term, so I'm down here with, with Heidi and Joseph my wife and my youngest son. You may not get a lot of them on camera today, particularly Joseph, I don't think he's mad keen on being on camera today, but it's, we're having a lovely family trip to the sea and I thought I'd bring you guys with us as well. It's nice to make a record of special days like this and share it with you, particularly as it's the glorious North Sea. And I don't know if we're gonna get out to the North Sea again this year, this might be the last time we're by the North Sea. I can see it shimmering over there, I know I should show you. And I've got lots of uh, to tell you about Frint and some of the interesting facts and figures about it because we're here on the Tendring Peninsula over in the east of England. Relatively short sort of journey from Stratford, East London. You just, it's an hour and 20 minutes because we changed at Thorpe Lesoken. You could just go on to Clacton on Sea and not do any of that. So it's, uh, and if you shop around as well, not madly expensive train fares in the UK as British people will know, can be quite exorbitant, but I booked on the, uh, on the Greater Anglia app. This is <laughs> starting to sound like an advert for Greater Anglia. Hey, Greater Anglia, I think you should sponsor me. Let's get that out there. They haven't done yet, which is frankly disgraceful. But anyway, before we go into the whole thing about Frinton plans for the today, because there are various things we could do. We could end up walking up the coast there to Walton on the Naze. We've just come out here to drift by the sea to soak up the sea air. But first things first, family are hungry. Can't have a hungry family, so we go, <laughs> we come down the Esplanade and I don't think there's anywhere to get anything to eat down here. That we, we can't gamble on that. So we've got to go back up the high street for fish and chips. This is the, uh, this is the lunch spot. Has to be fish and chips when you come to the sea, even if you don't want it. But I do want it, so. an absolutely enormous wind farm out there isn't there I don't think I've seen that one before it's quite an astonishing sight the fish and chips was brilliant was, was some of the best I've had I think sensational fish and chips there up at Young's the best fish and chips I think probably we've had is at Manly in Sydney where you go and I'll get Hayden the show so she can nod in approval where you where you get you choose the fresh fish and they cook it for you. You say, you know, literally the fish is there. They go, oh, what one do you want? You go, that one, that's, that's pretty good. And you eat it down. The, the only difference I'd say though, Hades, is then you have to eat it with those kind of dinosaur sized seagulls, uh, manly, who basically mug you for your fish and chips. They surround you and they're like enormous great beasts. I said that's factually incorrect. Oh no, what, why? Because I, I've said to you a couple of times, it's incredible how small the seagulls are in Australia compared to the giant beasts here. I, I just remember them being really big. No, that, it's just that they swoop or sit next to you and then take your food, but they're not actually big. They're aggressive they're, though. They're very aggressive, but they're really small compared oh. to here, where you get giants. So you, no one has to do that correction in the comments now. Hades done it <laughs> in real life. And you've got the great little uh, beach huts here, like at Southwold, which are great. Staring out at the North Sea. So I feel as if we 
have to head for the pier down there, Walton Pier, and then we can talk about Walton. I haven't spoken much about Frinton yet, have I? We'll do that on the beach. So Frinton's mentioned in the Doomsday Book in the 11th century. I put the name on the sea. Obviously it wasn't Frinton on sea. They hadn't developed that kind of cutesy kind of terminology at that point. But then actually what's funny is the Wikipedia entry then leaps forward to the, to the Victorian era when they start to kind of develop it. At that point there was just a church and a few scattered farms. Very little else here. And when they developed it, they developed it as a kind of well-to-do kind of holiday resort where the posh would come down. Edward VII, well the future Edward VII, when he was Prince of Wales, he used to come down here and play golf. Winston Churchill had a house here as well. So you can imagine the kind of scene that it was. Joe actually, if you can follow, Joe's doing the filming, maybe he could follow me and we can walk and talk. If you're wondering why I'm walking backwards because the sun's that way, I feel like I should at least. Um, well, one of my favourite little facts about Frinton is that there was a, a, a commander, an air commander who lived here, who launched a daring raid on Paris during the Second World War to try and land a trickler on the Eiffel Tower. It's that kind of place, Frinton. That's probably why we have the colourful huts. It's also the last place that the Germans tried to bomb on the British main, mainland in 1944. Oh yeah, and the other thing I forgot to tell you was the Summer Theatre. That's what it's really known for. And I love the idea that here's the Summer Theatre where a lot of famous actors, notable theatre actors, started their careers. Anthony Sher was amongst them. I love Anthony Sher, saw him playing Cyrano de Bergerac. But the Summer Theatre here is just quite a modest little kind of like village hall. It's the WI Hall, the Women's Institute Hall. It's that kind of place, for instance. Right, we're not going to go in the North Sea, we're going to play a game where we throw a water bottle between us. It's what we do in lieu of having a ball. The North Sea does just have a different feel to it. I don't know, I've reflected upon this before when walking along this, this coast here. And I love coming out here. I think it's partly to do with the vast expanse of the North Sea stretching far, far beyond, and also to do with the kind of the marshy, rugged coastline, the coastline which is fast eroding away. So we're closing in on Walton Pier, on Walton on the Nays. I'd like to go to the Nays, I'm not entirely sure we will get to the Nays, but um, that could be a destination for today. It depends if there's a rebellion within the ranks. This is, uh, it's unseasonably hot today. It's about, I think it's like 17 or 18 degrees. Well, look, I'm just in the jumper. Joe's in the sweatshirt. Hey, he's got an extra layer on because she's Australian, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, otherwise, it's really, really, really warm. I have to say, from here, that is not the world's most attractive looking pier. I'm hoping that it's slightly different when you get there. Also, like the family need ice creams, so they really, uh, they really take the whole beach hut thing here to a literally another level. Look, how many? One, two, three, four, five layers of beach huts. The same all the way along here. They go up at least two to three layers high. It's really incredible. Like a whole city of beach huts. Walton is said to mean village 
or farmstead of the Britons. Whether that means it's a place of ancient settlement or whether that was just a later name that's given to it, I don't know. But like Frinton, it goes back a very long way. But it was originally actually called Walton Le Soken. And Soken being, I don't fully understand it, but it's to do with being under the jurisdiction of London. And uh, Walton was under the jurisdiction of a chapter of St Paul's way out here. But one of the most intriguing and slightly, I suppose, if you like, chilling facts about Walton is this bit here. Walton on the sea today was originally inland. It was far inland. And this coastline here, particularly the Nays, where we're, I think we're walking up to it, it's a spit that sits out into the North Sea. This coastline all along here, the eastern coast, is eroding quite dramatically. And what it says on Wikipedia, anyway, is that the original village of Walton is nine miles out to sea. That's astonishing, isn't it? We are going to head for the Nays. Not sure whether we'll get there or not, but we're going to give it a go before our, our train goes at six o'clock. So we've gone out beyond the edge of the town of Walton, heading towards the Nays. There's a tower up here that I'm quite keen to see which I think is Hanover and Hanover in, you know, from the time, <laughs> from the time of the, uh, the dynasty of Hanover, um, that's threatened with erosion, could be swept away by the sea. Reading about the, uh, the lost village of uh, Walton, it makes me think, of course, of the famous example of the, the lost city of Dunwich in Suffolk, which was also swept out to sea and at one point Dunwich was said to be a very kind of influential and wealthy medieval port and I love what they would say is that there was a point I think it might have even been as recently as the Victorian era when the church bells could be heard tolling in the wind out to sea the ghostly echoes of the old church bells and I guess that must be why there are ghost stories set in Dunwich There's the tower poking above this kind of like heathland here. So we're going to go up to the tower and then I think we've got time to make it back for our train. Right, here's the path that takes us up to the tower. I think you pronounce it Hanoverian. I say, or Hanoverian, Hanoverian. Got tongue tied earlier. Mad to look at this coastline here and to know that it's all going to be swept away out into the sea. Very sobering thought. You might be able to see some dark shapes on the beach there, and those dark shapes are World War II pillboxes. They were anti-aircraft machine gun posts. And in the distance down there, you can see the uh, you can see Harwich, Harwich Port, the port of Harwich. Oh, I ended a wonderful walk along the Essex Way almost exactly a year ago. That was a magnificent day that was. And again, I just, I'm gonna keep saying it, I love this coastline so much. Like a lot of the rest of this coast and the south coast, there's lots of World War II defenses. You can see like various pillboxes along the coast here. And the tower was, uh, became a radar tower in 1939. So the tower here, Nays Tower was built in 1720 as a, as a navigation tower guided by um, Trinity House, which is uh, responsible for the lighthouses around the coast. And there's another tower at Walton Hall that was used to guide ships through the gap here, the coastal gap. I think it's called the Golma Gap. What a magnificent structure it is. 
Wow, that was an astonishing point, a great turning point in our walk. Now we have to walk by the road as directly as we can back to Walton and the Nace station. Our train goes in about an hour. So we probably won't be much filming between here and there. There's incredible views inland though between these blocks of flats. Well, thank you for joining me on that magnificent walk along the coast from Frinton to Walton on the Nays. We, what turned out to be a family excursion and we brought you along as well. And we're just about to hop on the train back to London. So, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. But in this coming season, I'll give you some hints. They'll definitely, I think we'll do the second part of the Soho walk. That's, that's kind of nailed on. We'll obviously do another city walk. Um, what else are we going to do? I need to get south of the river as well and do something in South London, whether that's the Quaggy, the Beverly Brook, or maybe a part of the Thames. Uh, ooh, I got quite a long way, didn't I, Southwest? But something like that, and then there's a few more up for grabs. Why don't you tell me what you fancy seeing in the comments below? And uh, we better dash for this train. Heidi and Joe didn't want to be in the wrap-up part of this. Understandably, they didn't buy into being in YouTube videos. I did because I absolutely love it. Have a great week.